Hi everyone and welcome to revision of chapter 15, Monopoly. Today we will speak about what are monopolies and why they arise, how monopolies make production and pricing decisions, we'll speak about profit maximization and the welfare cost of monopolies, and finally we will also discuss price discrimination. Now let us try to understand what is a monopoly. Monopoly is a firm that is the sole seller of a product without close substitutes. The fundamental cause of a monopoly is barriers to entry. A monopoly remains the only seller in its market because other firms cannot enter the market and compete with it. So, why monopolies arise? Monopolies arise because of barriers to entry, and barriers to entry in turn have three main sources. First, monopoly resources, which is a key resource required for production, is owned by a single firm. A classic example of market power arising from the ownership of a key resource is the beers. The South African Diamond Company. Founded in 1888, De Beers has at times controlled up to 80% of the production of the world's diamond mines. Because its market share was less than 100%, De Beers is not exactly a monopoly, but the company has nonetheless exerted a substantial influence over the market price of diamonds. So, Monopoly arising because of monopoly resources is not very common in real life. The second reason is the government regulation. The government gives a single firm the exclusive right to produce some good or service. In many cases, monopolies arise because the government has given one person or firm the exclusive right to sell some good or service. Sometimes the monopoly arises from the sheer political cloud of would-be monopolies. However, at other times the government grants a monopoly because doing so is viewed to be in the public interest. And IPP, Intellectual Property Protection Rights, or for example patents and copyright laws, are two important examples of this. And the last source is the production process, when a single firm can produce output at a lower cost than can a larger number of producers. So, here is an important term to remember regarding the third point, and it is a nature of monopoly. So, nature of monopoly is a monopoly that arises because a single firm can supply a good or service to an entire market at a smaller cost than could two or more firms. Because two or more firms incur higher costs, this prohibits additional competitors entering the market and the company remains a monopoly. And a perfect example of nature of monopoly is water supply. Now, the differences between competitive markets and monopolies. The main difference is the price. Now let us discuss how monopolies make production and pricing decisions. Because the competitive firms are price takers, they in effect face horizontal demand curves, as in panel A. However, as a monopoly firm is a sole producer in its market, it faces the downward sloping market demand curve, as shown in the second graph. The monopoly has the power to set its own price. It's not a price taker. But as always, there is a trade-off. As a result, the monopoly has to accept a lower price if it wants to sell more output. The trade-off is illustrated in the following table. As you can see, the initial effect of lowering the price, and the price is represented by the second column, is the increase in total revenue. 
which is represented in a third column. But there is a point after which the decrease in the price results in a decrease in the total revenue. In our case, it is 6 gallons or $5. As you can see, total revenue after that point decreases from 30 to 28. And this is also illustrated in the last column of marginal revenues. As you can see, marginal revenues are decreasing up to the point when the marginal revenue becomes zero. After this point, the marginal revenue is negative. You can also think about average revenues, which is also important. And it is important to understand why the marginal revenue is decreasing, because the price per product goes down and thus a change in the price and change in the quantity results to smaller marginal revenue for lower price. Now, the demand curve shows the quantity affects the price of the good. The marginal revenue curve shows how the firm's revenue changes when the quantity increases by one unit, because the price on all units sold must fall if the monopoly increases production. Marginal revenue is always less than the price. And here it is important to remember two important effects. The output effect, which is more output is sold, which tends to increase total revenue. And the second is the price effect, which is the price falls, which tends to decrease the total revenue. So at the point which at which one of these effects outweighs the other, the total revenue changes its trend. Now, what is the profit maximization strategy for a monopoly? A monopoly maximizes profit by choosing the quantity at which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. In our case, it's the point A. However, the monopoly then uses the demand curve to find the price that will induce consumers to buy the quantity. And that price point, in our case, is represented by the point B. The logic here is very similar to the competitive markets. As companies in competitive markets, monopolies will have incentives to produce more until the production of one additional unit brings additional revenue. And they will be motivated to decrease their production if their marginal costs are higher than marginal revenues, which will generate loss for the company. And thus the profit maximizing point remains the intersection of these two curves. However, in this case, we see that the price is different. And what happens? The monopoly basically generates a profit. And the profit is represented by the box uh, in our graph. We can also derive the mathematical calculation of the profit for monopolies. As you remember, profit is equal to total revenue minus total costs. It will have certain mathematical manipulations here. We get that profit is equal to price minus average total cost multiplied by the quantity, which is equal to the surface of the box represented in the graph. Now let's also discuss the implications of monopoly pricing for social welfare. Because a monopoly charges a price above marginal cost, not all consumers who value the good at more than its cost buy it. Thus, the quantity produced and sold by a monopoly is below the socially efficient level. And thus, the dead weight loss is represented by the area of uh, the triangle between the demand curve and the marginal cost curve. 
Now it's important to understand that this dead weight loss reduces the total surplus. And the question may arise why suppliers, or in our case the monopolists, decide to incur at least a part uh, of the reduction of the total surplus. And the answer is because of this shaded box which represented the profit. The idea is that the mon monopolist incurring certain loss of the supplier surplus represented by the dead weight loss area, they still get another increase in the supplier surplus which was represented by the monopolist profit. But what happens with consumers? Consumers lose both the part of the dead weight loss and the part represented as the monopolist profit. So, all in all, the social welfare is reduced, the total surplus is reduced, and thus we observe the negative effects of monopolies to social welfare. Finally, it's important to remember another term, which is the price discrimination. The price discrimination is the business practice of selling the same good at different prices to different customers. Let us also understand what are the effects of price discrimination. As you can see, at panel A shows a monopolist that charges the same price to all customers. And as we have already discussed, we have a part which represents deadweight lost, a part which is cut from consumer surplus and now it represents the profit for the monopolies and the blue triangle is the consumer surplus. However, panel B shows a monopolist that can perfectly price discriminate. So, which is the idea when the monopolist can suggest a product to each customer with a separate price, with a price that each individual customer is ready to pay for the product. Because consumer surplus equals zero, total surplus now equals the firm's profit. Comparing these two panels, you can see that perfect price discrimination raises profit, raises total surplus, and lowers consumer surplus. So that's it. These were the core concepts of chapter 15, Monopoly. I hope it was useful. And as always, please like and subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.